San Diego Comic Con 2018. There's a lot of diversity in creators, artists, writers. A lot of people of color really want to get into creating comics. But the key is to get more diversity on the editorial level. Um, editors, publishers, anyone who makes the decisions on who to hire. The initial wave of superheroes uh, of the 1930s and 40s is predominantly male and almost exclusively white. The African Americans were always drawn with big white lips, uh, which is just horrible. And the Asian characters were usually, their skin tone was yellow, uh, which is just weird. Um, and so they were usually the menace. So they were usually the evil bad guys. There are definitely stereotypes in these early comics, and it's important to see that so that we recognize how some of these stereotypes were continued because they were in popular culture. The first characters of color, the first superpowered characters of color in the Marvel Universe um, are green and orange. The Hulk is um, uh, readily sort of understandable as a kind of um, complicated allegory for race um, as a sort of figured through ideas of monstrosity. Um, the Thing in the Fantastic Four is also a character that has, is, is legible as a kind of a coded um, race figure. Uh, what, uh, those characters of color are, are introduced in the early 60s. Um, the process of diversification then really sort of pr uh, proceeds much more rapidly through the 70s and 80s, and at this point, if you're talking about the comic book universe at least, rather than perhaps the, some of the film and TV universes, um, it would be almost silly to try and count off um, uh, characters of color or queer characters. Uh, there's, there's more than I could easily name quickly now. Print, I think, tends to be able to kind of get away with that first and kind of test the waters. Comics are like the fertile ground from which a lot of movies um, draw their inspiration from. So I am Princess Shuri from Wakanda. From Everybody knows her from Black Panther. We're not all the way there yet, but it's a start. So when Black Panther came out, I was so excited and to see that my future children have something to look up to. Hollywood doesn't think that you know, diverse stories could sell overseas, so they make less of it and they don't give chance, chances to diverse stories that could be good. A lot of the times I do hear that China doesn't want to see black people. Black Panther did very well worldwide, regardless of the, you know, the culture of the market. Um, so it really is about creating stories that people that are universal to people, that people want to hear. Soon, there will only be the conquered. The reason why Superman, to this day, is such an, just is such an icon is because he embodies an element, a spirit of America that just will never go away. The modern superhero sort of explodes onto the scene in 1938 with the first appearance of Superman in uh, Action Comics number one. So when Superman first appeared, and a lot of people don't know this, but he's almost a kind of anarchist socialist. He fights um, representatives of the oil companies. He fights a advertising executives who are out to fleece the public. He campaigns for prison reform. So he's a really remarkable sort of crusader for social justice in his first appearance. Um, with the outbreak of World War II and with the rise of the commercial value of Superman as a property, he becomes a more socially conservative character. Um, as American values change in the 40s and 50s, Superman, the truth, justice, and the American way, I really think that was sort of, everybody was in, all the characters were ingrained with that sort of mentality. But I think as we got into the 60s and 70s, you started to see characters develop different personalities. You know, right now, especially in uh, popular media, you're seeing uh, more of a, a progressive slant, because most of the creators tend to, tend to be leaning more in the progressive 
point of view, so that, I think, is what's getting more reflected in the characters. The characters become the voice of whoever's creating them at the time, whoever the writer is or the artist. Um, you know, the things that are important to them are going to get interjected into those characters. I am dressed up as Captain Marvel. I would say now I would equate her to like the female Superman and now people actually want to see that story. You know, strength and female strength especially, which I think is really important in uh, you know, our current world. Their personalities aren't something that are uh, separate from what's going on in society. I think they, re they tend to reflect more what's going on in society. And so when things change or different ideas come into view, I think sometimes, a lot of times, you see those things reflected in the characters or in the situations they're in in their comics. The American uh, culture has been starting to lose its values. They're becoming more, I would say, like egocentric in, in some ways. And I think that Superman shows the opposite of it. Uh, it's a symbol of hope for people. And I think that like most people identify with him because they see him as the best person someone could be. All right. He was born on another planet. He was an alien refugee brought here as a child from a dying world. And he's always represented that part of America, that immigrant spirit. There was a lot of anti-immigrant sentiment happening at the time he was created. And I don't feel like that's ever changed. We like to pretend that, you know, America has changed greatly from that time period. And in a lot of ways it has for the better. But we're still having this argument of like, you know, do we let in refugees? How much is too much? Do we help? Do we not help? There'll never be an America that Superman isn't relevant in.